Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Well, let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Wandering Aimlessly 9. And it's from the Best of Redditor Update subreddit and says, Am I the asshole for telling my parents we are moving via text? A saga of breaking away from toxic parents. Long story short, my parents have a history of lying, gaslighting, manipulation, and such. Previously, it was in regards to my little having celiac and them swearing to follow the diet they know well, but then sneaking her foods with gluten or lying to her they were gluten-free. We put them in time out for a month or two, then had a discussion with them. They were allowed to speak when asking questions for clarification. In that, we set a lot of boundaries, which would be loss of grandparent privileges if they didn't follow. They keep all grandkids every Friday night because family should stick together and they want to see them and spend time with them. Plus, it gives you guys a break. It does not give me a break. What I get is three to four hours of round trip driving to meet my parents halfway and then waiting for them to call only to have to drop things at the last second because they know we live further but won't give us an hour heads up like we have repeatedly asked for. So I can't plan anything on Saturdays. Then driving a round trip for another three plus hours, not to mention the cost of gas. But they like spending time with their cousins, so we do it. Also note that the older grandkids only go to see each other. So if my kids don't go, my sister's kids don't go, which means grandparents get zero Friday night kids. Last night, my mum called. My dad had a mild heart attack. He's fine, she said. His ejection fraction was 35% and he was in congestive heart failure. He's on meds that are dropping his blood pressure, but the doctors are working on it. Of course, I wanted to know what hospital. Oh no, you don't understand. Dad is fine. This happened four to six months ago. They got the diagnosis four months ago. After talking to my mum and processing things, I realized something important. My dad picks my kids up on Fridays. My dad watched my little for a week at their insistence when I had to take the oldest to get medical care. He was alone with a five-year-old and no other adults. I calmly clarify with my mum that they've known for months and are just now feeling the desire to tell me when he's been driving my children around all this time. Well, yes. And we knew you were going to do this. I informed her that I had a right to know because it is my responsibility to make an informed decision about what situations my children are put in. My mum blew it off. She likes to gaslight, telling me that they would never put my children in danger or harm them. I asked her what would have happened had dad had a heart attack and wrecked, killing my children. She then ended the conversation saying if I was going to be like this, she couldn't talk to me. I wished her well and ended the call. Husband said a three months time out and after that we could talk. He feels three months would teach them that we are serious. I'm so lost and I won't deny it. I'm pissed. I want to mourn my dad's failing health, but I'm too pissed off that they took my decisions away because they know better. It was a manipulation and it's more gaslighting. My parents both came from really bad homes. If someone had called CPS back then, they would have done an emergency order on my dad's parents. They tried so hard to not continue the abuse and did really well. This is part of why I'm torn. I know they are trying, but their trying isn't good enough anymore. And there was only a couple of comments on this one. So we cover Cuttlebugger first, who says, I think you've given them enough chances, unfortunately. You are lucky nothing truly bad has happened yet. And even if slash when it does, you're unlikely to get the truth about what happened. You're leaving your kids with people you cannot trust. God knows I understand how hard it is to manage with no help, but you have to try. I think it's sweet you want kids to have a relationship with their cousins, but it sounds like you need a new plan for spending time with them. OP says, Unfortunately, I went no contact with my sister years ago. My parents didn't respect that boundary anymore, but now they have a 0% chance to break it. On my little third birthday, she walked in the door to my house with her 15-year-old daughter and started talking about the movie they watched last night. Keep in mind, we were standing at the door. She went on about sex, orgies, polyamory, unalive babies, etc. Then when the kids were running in and out of the living room playing, she broke into a client of hers and how she had to teach said client about said topic so police could ask questions. She's a therapist. We were given details. It ended in me having all the kids all go outside and me unleashing on her for being a therapist. 
she sure doesn't know what is and isn't appropriate to discuss at a child's birthday party. The only time they see their cousins is at my parents' house, but unfortunately, that is not my fault. My parents are behaving the way they are. My sister is mentally unwell and has gone away for help on top of her therapists and medications. And yes, she is really a licensed therapist. Yes, it's scary. It wasn't until the past few years I realized how toxic things actually were. And Tuna Tofu says, good call. Maybe you have the cousins come to your house. No unsupervised visits with the grands from now on though. Now, this one's a very, very simple one to me. If the grandparents aren't going to keep your child safe, which they've shown not only with, with the celiac, with, with knowing that his health isn't stable at the moment. And you know, anything could happen at any moment. And why would you risk your grandchildren's health in that way? But thinking about the celiac and lying to her as well that they were gluten free is just, oh man. But a week later, OP added another post, which was titled, I caused my dad's heart attack. 40 female, 65 male. What do I do? And this was following her telling her mum that they were in timeout from seeing the kids. Well, she didn't tell my dad, so dad kept asking if the girls were coming this weekend. Finally, I responded and said, for my convo with my mum last week, it was decided the girls will be staying home for the foreseeable future. Accusations started flying on his behalf, where he informed me he didn't want me to know because I caused his heart attack. I explained to him the 10 months of lying, by omission, is why the timeout is in place. I informed him I get to decide if he was healthy enough to drive my children after a heart attack and in CHF. If anyone in the family has a right to decide who drives their children around, it would be me and the registered nurse who is their mum. I also told him gaslighting would stop. I was the bigger person and didn't say I didn't cause your congestive heart failure because I didn't give you your genetics and I didn't give you the food you ate for the past 60 plus years. I didn't make you weigh 350 pounds or convince you to smoke for 30 years. I didn't make you sedentary for the past five years. Those are all on you. I'm even refusing to finish reading his message and the additional ones he sent. Seriously, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. He's denying they ever gave her gluten. He denies the convo where he admitted to it or the multiple times we caught him and educated where he said he wouldn't. We think he's developing dementia as he's had many head injuries over the years. Head on collision at 55 miles per hour, falling off an oil rig 30 feet up. Not sure how he survived those. I've questioned my mum before anything happened in November about dad forgetting things and she denies it saying you forget things when you're older. But yeah, they are in time out and will no longer have unsupervised access to the kids. I'm just lost. I want a relationship with my parents. They're getting old. They will be dying soon, but this isn't healthy. Someone says to OP, how did you cause the heart attack? And could they both have early onset dementia? OP says apparently the cause of the heart attack was when I told them they were poisoning her and it could kill her. I totally get it. They may both be. I haven't seen signs in my mum. I see more signs of her denying things slash gaslighting. OP updates 10 months later and says, so here's the gist. My parents don't like rules or boundaries. They think they have the ultimate say in regards to my children. Example, during the pandemic, doctors diagnosed our little with celiac. My parents had been following a gluten-free diet for our oldest, so we didn't think anything of them transitioning our child in their home to the diet. Long story short, we found out, but by my dad's own admission, that my parents had been given my child gluten because I want them to be like me and be sick. I roll. And if you take food away for a long time, that's how people develop allergies. I roll. We did a timeout so I could cool off. Then we had a come to Jesus meeting where I laid down the law. They agreed to the rules. Any deviation would result in no more unsupervised visits from the kids. Well, 10 months later, I found out that my dad had had a heart attack and was in congestive heart failure. They hid it for 10 months. Blah, blah, blah. He's fine. They're justified because I wouldn't have let the kids go with my dad, him driving, and they have a right to the kids. He also blamed me for his heart attack when it was really two to three McDonald's meals every day when he was working. 350 pounds and sedentary lifestyle, constant sugar intake and overall unhealthy lifestyle that led to his congestive heart failure and heart attack. I reminded them one of the criteria during the gluten discussion was no lying. My dad said it wasn't a lie because they didn't tell us. I reminded him he raised me that leaving out important facts was lying by omission and that this fits that criteria. Then there was him saying, 
I was bitter and trying to control them. I put us in another timeout because I needed a break and that when the timeout was over, there would only be supervised visits. He still contacted me each week to see if he was coming to get the girls. I ignored because time out. Finally, he mentions my nephew acting as if something is wrong, only to find out nephew wants to know when my kids are coming back. Unexpectedly, in the middle of the timeout, my husband got a job and we are moving out of state. Ouch. This has nothing to do with my parents. The timing was an unfortunate consequence. Here is the catch. A few weeks before the pandemic started, my husband discussed a possible move out of the country for his job. That crumbled when the pandemic hit, obviously. However, leading up to it, my parents were throwing a fit and how could you do that to us? We have rights to see our grandchildren. Family comes first no matter what. You were hurting the children by not letting them have regular access to their family. And my favorite, we can sue for grandparents' rights. In our state, grandparents have no rights if the parents are married. I don't know about the state we are moving to. I don't want to deal with the accusations. I don't want to deal with the fight. I just want it done and over with. So, am I the arsehole for doing it by text and not a call? Opie gives a clarification on the gluten-free diet and who diagnosed. Opie says, I apologize. The doctors diagnosed celiac. My parents had been following a gluten-free diet for the oldest, so we assumed it wouldn't be a big deal for my parents to transition the child to the same diet. They follow it for the older one. My father informed me they were giving her small amounts of gluten so she didn't develop an allergy and that they, my parents, had decided the reason we put her on a gluten-free diet was because I was lonely being sick and wanted others like me. I have allergies and a gluten sensitivity. I do not have celiac, but yeah, sorry for the confusion. Someone says, why is the oldest gluten-free? Opie says she has something similar to celiac called gluten ataxia. Instead of attacking the intestines, it attacks the brainstem. When exposed to gluten, she loses the ability to walk. We do have medical documentation. Someone says, never let them be unsupervised with your kids. Opie says they will never have unsupervised access again. I put a full stop to that. My father informed me that he will never do supervised visits, so I sucked it up and did what Reddit said. I kid you not, I did. Then you won't see them again. Any phone calls, any video chats, any mail will all be supervised, including any gifts that come in the mail from them. All will be opened and read and combed through ahead of time. My mum likes to send cards and gifts when they are in trouble. We love you no matter what anyone says. It breaks our heart that you are away from us. Then she sends a gift that is all girly for the child who is girly, and a super girly gift for the oldest who is a tomboy. She does Rubik's Cubes, Ninja Warrior stuff within her ability, mountain biking, and my mum sends her origami flowers. Adult coloring books with girly themes like lipstick and makeup. Everything will be monitored from here on out. Someone says, don't give them your new address or let them come visit. Opie says it makes me feel bad, but I don't want them to come visit. I've never felt comfortable in the nice homes we've owned. They were all foreclosures and were so beautiful, but half the price. I've always felt the need to tell people we could never afford something so nice. My husband said it was bragging, but I honestly never felt like I deserved it. Then my husband asked me, what do you think your parents would say about the new house we picked out? And I said, my mum will tell me it's nice and that she deserves something like this, but my dad never loved her enough to give her something like this. Then my dad will tell me, it's nice, but it's going to cause so many problems because my mum will want him to do upgrades to their double wide and that it will devolve into fights and him spending thousands of dollars for her to say it's not good enough. So thanks. And at that moment, I realized every home, the same reaction. They deserve it more. I don't deserve it. And I realized they are the reason I never feel like I deserve a nice home. Someone says, why are you still keeping contact with them? Opie says, in all honesty, it wasn't until I joined Reddit and started reading things and saying, that's toxic as hell. Get out. Let me tell you about the time my parents did X, Y, Z. After a few of those responses, I started realizing what my parents were saying they were doing out of love and family obligation was actually toxic. I'm working on it. With each issue, I get closer and closer to the no contact. I'm hoping, however fruitless it might be, I realize it's maybe a 5% chance of getting better. Once I start laying down boundaries that they will start to realize their actions are inappropriate and what led to the issues. Opie comes in with one more update and says, thank you all. I didn't expect the outpouring of love. I'm learning how to deal with things. Once we are moved, I'll be finding a therapist. 
Thank you to those who sent me resources to help. I truly do appreciate them. We decided to tell them after my husband has officially moved or is about to walk out the door so he can be there. We will be hanging back a week or two, but he will establish a new residency for us the next day. There will be official new state residents before they can do anything. They can't get an address because, well, we didn't have one yet. Law. We have always taken the approach of you deal with your family and I will deal with mine. But you have helped me see. Once I tell them, he can deal with them and I'm okay with that. So is he, to clarify. And I will not be embarrassed or ashamed of my new home. It'll be beautiful. It'll be a dream. It'll be a place to make a ton of memories in and they will not ruin it for me this time. And I think before I say what I'm going to say, I think it's... I think it's always important to say, and I know I say it a lot, but it's always easy for me to say when I'm sat here in front of a microphone, it's always to say, you know, it's for the best moving out of state, getting that fresh start for your family. And, you know, I understand it's going to be painful to cut ties with your parents, but, but I think it's super important for like, you know, the mental and emotional well-being of your family, of your immediate family, that is. Because ultimately, it is your responsibility to your children to ensure that they grow up safe in a loving and a stable environment, which your parents are not providing. They're putting them at risk and gaslighting you about it. And you talked about sort of generational abuse, which I've seen a lot of where I grew up. Like looking back, I helped my niece move just recently and I went back to where I used to live and saw a family which I've talked about in the past and they're still exactly the same as when I used to live around there and the children which you know are now my age I grew up with them and you know it's just it's sad basically and you know talking about generational abuse and whilst it might explain some of their behaviors as we always say it doesn't excuse them we have a responsibility to break these harmful cycles and especially when we've experienced and seen sort of the damage firsthand. Which of course, again, I know is easier said than done, but still needs to happen. But what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's have another story. And let's have something a little bit different, which comes from the Entitled People subreddit. It does have an update as well, titled Entitled co-worker tries to schedule meetings outside of contract time and criticizes my non-work plans. I have a co-worker who is really disorganized and waits until the last minute to schedule things and so that frequently means calling a meeting at 4 o'clock on a Friday. For reference, my 8-hour workday ends at 3. So these meetings make for 10-hour plus days. And because the co-worker is so disorganized and unprepared, we frequently have to cover things that they should have done ahead of time like creating an agenda or desired outcome at the actual meeting. Because these are required meetings, usually only once or twice a month, I have to go to them no matter when they are scheduled and get extended pay for working overtime. But my coworker is supposed to give at least a week's notice. And I definitely rather have the free time than the money. Typically, if I don't hear by Thursday afternoon that they have scheduled the meeting for four on a Friday, I make other weekend plans like hiking or cycling or going out somewhere. Yesterday, Friday, the co-worker attempted to schedule a meeting at 4.45, but didn't put it on my calendar until 3.05. I should have been off by then, but I had an end-of-day meeting that went over by a few minutes. I was doing the last check of email and then shutting things down for the weekend. I saw the meeting request and responded that wasn't enough notice for a meeting that far outside the workday, and that I normally would not have seen the notice until the following Monday, and CC'd my boss, just so they know I wasn't trying to shirk any duties. Of course, co-worker is upset because they're required to hold a meeting by law and it's the absolute last day to do it without filing an extension, which they've been told by my boss they're not allowed to do unless there's extenuating circumstances. And they've known about it for two months. They just didn't plan for it. My boss calls at 3.10 saying, can you please do this now and end at 4.10 and we'll address it on Monday. Fine. I was planning on leaving town, but I can leave a little bit later. Coworker responds to my boss by email and says they're using personal time between 3.10 and 4.45 so they can't hold the meeting until then and that nothing I'm doing could possibly be important enough that I can't attend the meeting at 4.45. Boss calls co-worker. Co-worker confess that their child's birthday party is at 6 that evening and that they have to go try to find a cake and party supplies for the party before the meeting, which is why they can't be available. 
Boss gets annoyed and says that we, Boss and I, will do the meeting now and co-worker will have to answer for it on Monday. Boss and I hold a meeting. It takes 20 minutes. I come out of there by 3.45. Co-worker sends me a nasty gram by text at 10.15pm saying it's my fault they're in trouble and that they have a child so I should understand that people with children come first and that my activities and hobbies are pathetic and it wouldn't have been hard for me to just attend the meeting they scheduled that they have to go back and fix everything my boss and I did incorrectly because they like to do it a specific way. My boss had already submitted it. I responded that I hoped they enjoyed their child's birthday party and to have a good weekend. They responded that they forgot to invite people so no one came. And thanks for rubbing that in their face. I kind of felt, and I know it's not the big issue here, and I'm not blaming OP whatsoever because it's clearly the co-worker who's being an arsehole here, but you said about them putting it on your calendar at 3.05 and usually you're finished by 3. I would have just ignored that and shut my shit down. And I've been out of that door as quick as possible. But I guess at least this way you're bringing some light to the situation. Your boss is now aware of how flaky this co-worker has been. I mean, even forgot to invite people to their child's birthday party. Which just made me feel awful for the child actually. But OP did update the post and says, I had a meeting yesterday with my boss regarding the meeting that boss and I had to do for coworker and the rude text messages sent by coworker. My boss will be sharing extensive documentation with HR, including their own notes. And I have been asked to pull all of my calendared meetings from the last six months and send them to HR. I'd already screenshotted them because I had to submit extended hours. Glad I did because coworker tried to delete them slash uninvited me from them when they caught wind that it was an issue of contention. My boss couldn't go into details obviously about their course of action with the co-worker but I do know their meeting with HR isn't until Thursday and their meeting with my boss was after mine yesterday which was after my work day but not theirs. Another co-worker sent me a text saying that co-worker came out of the meeting with red puffy eyes that looked like they've been crying but otherwise nothing juicy to report. As for the next steps, the one course of action I do know is that co-worker will be required to provide a written apology by Friday of this week and it'd be added to their personnel file. If my company follows their usual process, which my boss hinted at on Friday, co-worker will basically be given the opportunity to resign from their current job and resume their old job, or they can be administratively removed from their current job and be placed in their old job. The current job is an unfilled vacancy. It'll take place August 1st, but in the meantime, they will no longer be in charge of the project I've had to work with them on, and our grant department will do it instead. I have not heard from coworker for the apology, but I'm expecting something vague and half-assed, probably by email at 11.59 on Friday. But what I expect is even more likely they put it off and claim that they need accommodation to not have to do it and drag it out with HR. OP updated and said, apology received. And it said, sorry for projecting my stress onto you. You didn't deserve to get lashed out at. It's been a rough year with a divorce and getting used to a new job. I'm stepping down in August to take care of me and child's name for a while. I'm sure that gossip is already spreading like wildfire. Thanks for putting up with me, co-worker. And having read many posts from the entitled People subreddit, I wasn't expecting an apology like that, I have to say. And you know, it might not be genuine, but it felt like it was to me anyway. If I received an apology like that, I think I'd be pretty content. And on the back of that apology, which, you know, I'm considering genuine, you may not, which is absolutely fine because the OP did show a hell of a lot of entitlement within that one post. But I always cast my mind back, especially to like one of my stories that I've told you before about the woman chucking a hoover over the top of the balcony. And, you know, I think back about it these days, you know, I have a laugh about it because it was funny at the time. But I still look back and think about what was going on in their life in that moment for them to just snap like that. Like, I don't know what's going on in the background of their life. And, you know, it's not my problem in the grand scheme of things. But mirroring it to the story that we've just read and, you know, seeing that they could be facing some significant emotional and maybe personal turmoil, if you like. I always just like the reminder, not that they're going through stuff, but like the reminder that we often don't know what's going on in someone's life and we're only seeing a small part of their life and you know just a small bit of empathy can go a long way obviously understanding that this doesn't excuse the absolute entitlement that they've shown in this one post as well i know i know 
people often get on my back about those sort of comments and you know it's just the way i am <laughs> i can't help it i'll accept being a doormat or or whatever it just always goes through my mind and you know i speak my mind on this channel as much as i can but what do you guys make of this situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below now just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories your love your support your time always means the absolute world to me so thank you so much for being involved truly you're amazing and hopefully we'll see you in the next one take care and much love your cheeky so-and-so <laughs>